Hey, Draymond. Phil Barber, Santa Rosa Press, Democrat. Uh, you had some, uh, some praise for Bob Myers at the parade this year. Uh, can you reflect a little bit on what he was able to do since then for this team? Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely had, you know, high praise for Bob. Um, that hasn't changed one bit. You know, it's, if anything, it's higher. But, you know, what he did, you know, with this team was fantastic to keep. I don't know how often someone brings 12 guys back. I don't think that's usually the case. But, you know, for us to bring 12 guys back and, and with the additions we had, you know, I added, I, you know, I think it was a great offseason, um, you know, to sign every guy that we said we were going to re-sign. It, it, it never usually happens like that. So a lot of credit to Bob, um, you know, and, and getting the job done. A lot of credit to ownership and stepping up and, you know, giving Bob the resources that it takes to get the job done. I think, you know, they, they all form an incredible, incredible team and partnership. And, you know, it showed in Bob's work and free agency. Ann Killian with the San Francisco Chronicle. One of the talking points during this very short offseason has been whether you guys are going to go to the White House or not. And I'm just wondering, some of your teammates have spoken out and said they won't. And I'm just wondering where you stand on that. I understand you guys are going to have a discussion as a team. Uh, yeah, uh, we're going to have a discussion. Um, you know, pretty much kind of take the temperature of everyone. Um, and we're going to decide whatever's best whatever we think is best for us. You know, it may not be the, the popular thing to do, the most popular thing or, you know, whatever we decide. But at the end of the day, we are the ones that have to attend if we decide to attend. And I think it's only right that, you know, we all decide together. You know, it's not one person choice. It's not two people. Um, you know, it, it'll, go, it'll be between all of us. And we'll come up with a decision and then go from there. Hmm? I mean, I, I have an opinion on pretty much everything, you know. <laughs> That's just, you know, who I am. But at the end of the day, um, like I said, this isn't a personal decision, you know, so I can kind of have my opinion on what I think. Um, but I, I could think, hell no, I'm not going. Or I could think, hell yeah, I want to go. End of the day, we're going to decide as a team. And so... If we're deciding as a team, one person opinion doesn't matter. We're going to collectively come together and decide what we think is best for everyone. Great middle section, last row. CJ Peterson, SF Bay. Draymond, as someone who's experienced, you know, mishaps on social media yourself, um, did you reach out to KD after his Twitter fiasco at all? And if so, what advice did you give him? Jesus, throw me under the bus, why don't you? Saying the truth, man. Never let me, oh, just let me float. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I reached out to him. I talked to him um, through text the day of. And then the next day I saw him in person and I laughed in his face. I thought it was, you know, I got good laughter out of it. It's pretty funny to me. And I reminded him, since you want to talk about my mishap, I reminded him of my mishap, and when we were at USA Basketball, the day my mishap happened, I was stressed out, and all of them were laughing in my face, from him to DeMarcus, probably was the worst. Um, and, and the beat goes on, they all laughed in my face, so it was a little payback. I stood right there, over there, and laughed in his face, and it felt pretty damn good to do. Second row, left-hand side. Uh, Matt Kolsky, SF Examiner. Uh, obviously, you said Bob brought 12 guys back. A lot of your competition, specifically in the West, changed a lot. H how much time do you spend thinking about, all right, now we got this pairing to look at. Maybe it's how your defensive responsibilities might change against different teams. How much of your offseason do you think about that stuff? I, I try to spend my offseason not thinking about the season at all, um, other than preparing myself you know, for what, for the things that I want to accomplish. Um, you know, try not to focus on, you know, what other teams are doing. Obviously, I'm a basketball fan. You see it all just, see it all just like y'all see it all. But to worry or try to plan, like, I don't try not, like, season's long enough uh, to have to do that. Um, I think at the end of the day, yeah, teams did make a lot of moves, if we, but 
our goal is the same goal as always been, be the best version of us that we can be. Um, and I think just like any other year, when we're the best version of us that we can be and we get better each and every time we step on the floor, I still think we're the best team. So that's just my opinion. Um, so, so I focus and worry about us, you know, and what we're going to do, not necessarily how another team is going to jail or how this duo is. I think if we take care of what we need to take care of, it really don't matter how someone is jail. For sure, right-hand side here, yeah. Scott. Scott Oslo, the Chronicle. Hey, Draymond. Uh, you, Steve indicated that you went with him and KD, I think, to Los Angeles to help recruit uh, Nick Young. And you, obviously, you were in on the recruiting of, of KD and all that stuff. Do you see that as, as actual important function of, of you with the team being kind of a salesman and, and, and selling the team to, to guys like that? I just love to win. Actually, I hate to lose. And in hating to lose, you got to find ways to get better. And, you know, Helping recruit guys is one of the one of the ways that you get better, you know, so um, I don't take it for granted. I don't take it like oh, it's Steve's job just to go or you know, it's Bob's job like at the end of the day Nick will never step on the floor with Steve. He'll never step on the floor with Bob You know, and I know how I would look at it if a team was recruiting me Like yeah, you want you know to be able to talk to your GM and you want to have a rapport with your coach but at the end of the day you can never step out there with them so I need to know the guys I'm really going in the pits with you know who am I going out there and battling with who am I around every day I think that's sometimes more important I know that's how I would look at it like I said if I was a guy being recruited um, one of the reasons I chose to go to Michigan State was because I loved the guys there, and they recruited me. And so that kind of taught me a lesson going back, dating back to high school, and I just kind of, you know, um, stick by it. Same row. You won two championships. At what point does making history take on, motiv become part of your motivation for... Uh, doing this because you have to find ways to get motivated I'm sure other than just wanting um I mean that's always somewhere in the back of your mind um I don't think you're going into every day thinking oh man like we're going to make history we got it's so hard to make history like that's over a course of time and you have to approach that year by year so I think you know um I think it's okay to have goals like that but those are long-term goals. I think you have to set the short-term goals in order to reach those. And so the history for us would be to try to repeat. Um, what is it, seven teams, eight teams or something like that that's repeated? Like, we want to do that. We had an opportunity up 3-1 and, and couldn't close the deal. So that's something that we want to do. And so I think when you're setting short-term goals like that, you can set the goal of, you know, making history if you want. But... If you set the right short-term goals, history will be made anyway if you can reach those short-term goals. Two more for Draymond, second row, middle. Uh, Dieter Kurtenbach, Bay Area News Group. Uh, been a pretty crazy three-year run going from an upstart team to now the quote-unquote super villains. Did you have a chance at all this summer to reflect on just what's happened over the last three years, and how do you think uh, you've adjusted from going from that plucky team that no one really thought to now a historically, arguably great franchise? Um... I do think about that all the time, you know, it's just, it's a special thing, and I think a lot of times in life, we forget to live in the moment, especially in our day and age, you know, with social media, let me record this, like, and I miss everything I'm watching because I'm looking at it through a phone, like, you forget to enjoy the moment, so for me, I try to enjoy the moment, you know, that's one thing I really try to live by is, you know, really enjoying it, and with things like this, as much as I try to enjoy the moment, you will never fully understand it until it's over. You know, and as crazy as that sounds, you know, we all say, like, hey, man, enjoy it while you got it because once it's over, it's over. And you do that to the best of your ability, but you will still never get the full understanding until it's over. Because at the end of the day, I'm still grinding every day trying to make it happen again, trying to do this better, trying to do that better. So you can never really get it until you're done with it and you look back. So, for instance, looking back at last season, I can look back at it and say, man, that was special. But then you're on so quick to, like, how do we do that again next year? How do we get better and all these different things? Um, so, but I do reflect a lot. Um, I think it's been a, an amazing three years. You look at the things that, you know, we've been able to accomplish. Um, 
as a team, as an organization. And then, you know, things guys have been able to accomplish individually as well. You know, I think it's been special. And, you know, it's definitely something that this group doesn't take for granted. La I'm not surprised, but I also know it wasn't easy. You know, sometimes it, it may look easy uh, when you win 73 games, um, 67 and whatever the other number was, 60-something. It may look easy to go to three straight finals, um, to have won two out of three, but it's hard. You know, um, it's extremely hard. So I never sit back and say, oh, man, we did that easy. It wasn't easy. Um, it's, it's hard work every single day. Uh, to say that I think it will happen that fast, I mean, you kind of saw guys, you saw us growing as a team, but you, you definitely saw guys coming into their own. You know, if you look at Steph's career three years ago, like he wasn't where he is today, Clay, myself, um, you know, the beat goes on. Like, if you look at the dramatic changes in individuals over the last three years, then you can kind of sit back and say, okay, I understand their dominance. But it definitely starts with, you know, guys getting better as individual players in order to make the team better. Last one for Draymond. I'm Draymond, uh, Bart Medina, Mercury News. So, circling back to what you're saying about giving Kevin a hard time about the tweet, what was, what's his mood been like overall and his reaction after you were giving him a hard time? Um, you can definitely tell he was salty about it. Um, you know, he said, uh, like, yeah, I was just really having fun, <laughs> and then I went too far. And I understand that, you know. We all do things in life where we're just having fun, and you look up and like, uh-oh, that was fun for the time being. Now it's not so fun anymore. Like, I think everyone in here, including myself, has all done that, you know, where you're just living in the moment. Um, you're enjoying what you're doing, and then you realize, like, yeah, that probably wasn't the best idea. Um, at the end of the day, there's still a a human element to this whole thing. Um, whether you're the first best or second or third or fourth best player in the league to the 500, you know, or 450 or whatever, however many guys it is, there's still a human element to this. And, that, and things like that show that human element. And so um, at the end of the day, you know, we're, we move on. Um, he's not a distraction to us. He step on the floor, play hard every night. He, has, he didn't go out and you know, commit a crime, um, you know, at the end of the day, and it maybe weren't the right tweets, but he sent some tweets. And, uh, you know, I know Kevin's a smart guy. Um, I know he's a remorseful guy. Um, sometimes probably too remorseful, you know, but at the end of the day, that's who he is. He feels bad about it. There's nothing he can do to change it. He came out, he took credit for it, which I respect. You know, there are so many different things that he could have done in saying, yeah, that wasn't me or, like, somebody else. Like, he could have done so many other things. He, he stepped up. He said, I did it. I was wrong. And we move on from it. Great. Thank you.